What happens to the marine life when the oil is spilled into the ocean? I reflect it into the mirror so it can reflect the light up. This science fair at Franklin Elementary is not your typical school event. The entire school is involved in the science fair from kindergarten through fifth grade. Not only do all students participate, but they also judge each other's work. We have a Kids Choice Award for second grade, third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade. And all of our boards are numbered so the kids don't know who's who, and they have to vote on their best. So what you do is put the peroxide in both of them. I did an experiment called hot and cold water. My mom told me with this. My hypothesis is I think the temperature will change because the temperature starts at zero degrees Fahrenheit, and if you put the thermometer in the cup filled with hot water, the temperature will change. Making it a process where it's student-driven, I think is the, the best part about it because it's not me telling you, you have to do this. Gummy bear zone. My question was, will these gummy bears dissolve? If so, how? Actually, water can make a gummy bear grow. I thought that the water will make the gummy bear dissolve, but it made it grow. This is the water. When I put this in the water for 12 hours, this will happen. It turned bigger, but it lost its shape a little. During the day, all students visit the science fair, and that evening, many parents come to see their child's work. Can you come sign in? This is my project on how magnets work. The reason it can stick is because this is made out of iron, and iron is the king of magnetics. Earth has a magnetic field, and the, the sun has a seven times stronger magnetic field. So many times we don't know how the things work, and I think this is a good opportunity to learn how things work. It's a nice way for the parents to connect with school, because um, it's not necessarily about homework. It's about exploring something that their child is interested in. My project is oop, like, and when you punch it, it's a solid, and when you put your hand slowly, it's a liquid. Like me, wait, let me, me and my dad, we used um, all these materials and we tried four different motors and they all didn't work until we found the right one. We encourage them, their peers are encouraging them. Um, that child that might have been a little reluctant to do a project is now thinking, oh, well maybe I can do this. I want every child to walk out of here feeling successful. These fourth graders are about to witness something very special. So what's it take to become a, a naturalized United States citizen? The first thing This is Keith Dorr, a regional supervisor with U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. Six years ago, my daughter was actually in this school. She was uh, in Ms. Nichols' classroom and during a parent-teacher conference, Ms. Nichols said, would you mind coming to the class and, and talking to the students? And I said, absolutely, I would love to do that. He shows so much enthusiasm, and he mentioned that sometimes they take the ceremonies out of the office, and he would always love to do one in a school, and I said, well, let's do it. So fourth grade teachers Laura Nichols and Andrew Battle have incorporated this event into their curriculum for the past six years. Any time that you can bring something from the real world that you've been learning about into the classroom or into the school, I think it's ten times more powerful than me standing up there talking about it or even just showing a video about it. I hereby declare. I hereby declare. I almost started to cry a little bit. It was very exciting. All allegiance. All allegiance. You'll be like from another country. Now you're kind of like a part of this country. Congratulations. You're all officially citizens of the United States. When you see that emotion in their face, I get a little emotional and I have to then hold my bearing because I'm doing the ceremony. But uh, it's definitely an emotional thing. Why is it necessary or important to have an actual naturalization ceremony, which is what you saw this morning? So why Today in class, we're going to have the children reflect on some higher level questions, get them thinking on a, on a deeper level about 
what they're witnessing in the ceremony, what they've learned so far, and have them respond to one another. How might the new citizens have been feeling today? Why would they be feeling these emotions? I put excited because they took time to do this and they accomplished these goals. I wouldn't want it just to be in like a little small room. I'd want it to be a big like assembly of people instead of... It was of August 5th, 1970 that I became a naturalized citizen at the age of 20. And watching these people become American citizens, it's, it brings me back to my journey and where I am today and happy to be here. <laughs> Witnessing it in person, I think, brings it to a new level when you see their faces. Whereas if you were just looking at names, wonderful, it's a great experience, but to see it happening and to see their emotional response, they stand up and they wave the flag and they're smiling. It's a moment to see.